And so as we kind of shift gears then, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about this alternative position, yeah. which is the integration position, that the Bible uh, and complemented by um, clinical therapy or professional counseling can actually be useful and fruitful in the life of a believer. And so the first thing is that you have a different theory of knowledge here, mm -hmm. right? On the one hand, with the Bible alone counseling perspective, the Bible is the exclusive, meaning the only source of knowledge that you can use right. for spiritual growth. Now, there is a view here in the Bible and psychology integration view where special revelation or the Bible mm -hmm. as well as general revelation are God-given gifts. Yeah. Meaning that God shows himself not only through what he says in scripture, but what how what he has done and how he has set the world up to be. All truth belongs to God. Exactly. Irrespective that. of how it reveals itself. Yep. And, and you know, that's from Augustine. There. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so this nice. isn't this isn't new, right? <laughs> like Christians have been saying that for yeah. hundreds and thousands of years. years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and so this theory of knowledge already comes from this perspective that if we see a, a grain or a pattern established in God's world, for example. It seems to be the case that if you live your life stealing and um, lying, you're probably going to be in a, in a world of hurt. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't have to be a Christian to know that. Right. Right? So the, the theory of knowledge from this perspective is going to propose, hey, listen, God has made these patterns known in the world in such a way that even non-believers can recognize these truths. Absolutely. And they can then... Not only, they're not imposing those values, they're recognizing them. Yeah. And by recognizing, they can affect then valuable change. Yeah. See, that changes Huge. the ballgame. Huge. Um, so then uh, the distinguishing factor here is that Scripture isn't the exclusive authority, it's the ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the difference here is that in the Bible alone counseling, you can only use the Bible, it's the only source. In, in the integration view, Scripture gets the last say, yeah. It's the the strongest voice or the last voice on the table, but it's not the only one. Yeah. Yeah. And this is important to me because I, I think if God reveals God's self and God's truth in mm -hmm. a variety of ways, then it's probably important to look at, learn, and best implement those ways that we can and just make sure that they line up with scripture and just, exactly. check, and just check them. Like, exactly. It's, it's like... It, you're not less of a Christian if you just double check against the scriptures, right? Like, that's fine. So then psychology and theology aren't competing right. as sources of knowledge. They're rather complementing each other because they're both given by God. Mm -hmm. I was reading this really interesting article by John Coe, um, spiritual formation guru. I know you've, you've read mm -hmm. some of his stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated how he talks about wisdom literature, um, meaning the Psalms and the Proverbs in the Old Testament. He says, God creates and sustains the world with his imprint on it, known as wisdom. Yeah. Right. So, so what we know about wisdom in the, in the Bible is is the way that God has designed or made the grain of, of the world. So then wisdom is not only recognizable to believers, but it's also recognizable to non-believers as they see how the world works. Mm -hmm. In that sense, wisdom is the skill of learning how to live in line with the grain of God's world, a recognition of God's imprint, not an imposition of foreign values. Yeah, so good. I mean, that's amazing. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think... What I love about this position is it implies humility there in a way that I don't think the Bible only counseling one does. Yeah. And I think that's important for us and for our mental health as people moving forward, truly. For sure. For sure. And so the, the biggest concerns that I've heard with this is like, wait, but hold on. What about all the, the humanistic or all the atheistic or theorists or practitioners, psychologists who deny God and say that humanity is is basically capable of healing themselves. So from this perspective, I, I don't think that's actually a very compelling um, argument because you can recognize that there's methods or practitioners who are going to be out of line and yeah, like they're wrong. However, a lot of practitioners from early onset and currently in the field are Christians mm -hmm. and you have a lot of major Christian influences like Augustine, mm -hmm. like Aquinas, mm -hmm. uh, Luther, Calvin, who are speaking about spiritual growth and theology in a way that borrows from, from these ideas as well before it was even a formal field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, if all truth belongs to God, if someone somebody says that God doesn't exist, that doesn't negate the truth from still being yeah, God. Correct. So I actually find this very encouraging. As, as a last kind of thought here, I really hope that our viewers are able to be encouraged and maybe even be able to look up some of the readings that we've referenced well, to go say. See a, start by going to see a counselor. There you there. go. Exactly. No matter where you are, if you feel like you're in good mental health, 
go see a counselor anyway yeah. because you're just going to learn more stuff about yourself exactly. and it's going to be awesome. Make sure they're a follower of Jesus. Check what they say against the Bible, but see them anyway.